In this presentation, we will take a look at part one of an example problem related to a hospital. We'll be recording financial transactions related to the hospital. We're gonna have the information up top. We're gonna be recording those or journalizing our journal entries down below and then posting them to a trial balance worksheet on the right side. The trial balance worksheet will be in order. We have the assets in green, the liabilities in orange. What would be the equity section in a for-profit type of organization? What is here in the net assets? section for our hospital in light blue what would be the income statement section in a for-profit type of organization in uh, here having the temporary accounts like a for-profit organization the revenue and expense type of accounts in the dark blue the bottom line number the change in the temporary accounts down below will be similar to the net income you'll notice here of course that the debits will be positive numbers the credits will be negative numbers the green zero represents the fact that the debits minus the credits equals zero therefore in balance first item patient service revenue on account so we're going to say that there's patient service revenue on account for the entire time period we will be recording these transactions as if we're lumping up together the like type of type of activities for the entire time period so obviously throughout a time period whether it be a year or a month we would have patient service revenue on account meaning similar to us issuing an invoice to the patient recording like we would in a for-profit organization and increase to a receivable and increase to revenue we're basically going to be doing this all in one lump sum as if we did this for the entire period recording that type of transaction for the entire period so that we can go through this practice problem a bit more quickly and be able to focus in on those areas within the hospital that would be different than other types of for-profit types of organizations so we have the patient service this would be very similar to us issuing a a invoice in a for-profit type of organization we haven't yet earned or we haven't yet received the money however we have earned the money therefore we're going to record an asset that asset being a receivable because we have not got the cash yet the other side then go into some type of revenue account the revenue account here is simply going to be called patient service revenue which makes sense that's going to be our primary revenue account for the hospital so the only change there is basically the terminology really of the revenue account posting this out then we're going to say that the accounts receivable is going to be increasing here's the beginning balance goes up in the debit direction here is the ending balance then we have the patient service revenue it's at zero we're going to be crediting it it's going to go up in the credit direction so there we have that the effect on what would be similar to the net income number is only going to be these dark blue accounts it's an increase in the credit direction this is not a loss this is an increase in the credit direction next we're going to have the sales in the hospital shop so we're going to say that we have the hospital shop here sales within it we got flowers and all that kind of good stuff in the hospital shop and so we're going to record all these sales again as one lump sum uh, type of transaction our goal here is to basically see where we're going to group this within the hospital because of course we want to take it out and, and make it a little bit separate because it's not one of our primary operating type of activities it's, it's going to be an other type of revenue in this case so we're going to debit cash so we're going to say for this time period we had all of our hospital shop sales are increasing cash the other side is going to go to revenue other so it's going to go to another revenue account of course it is a type of revenue account it's going to be other obviously our primary revenue is the patient service revenue and this would be uh the the other types of revenue that we would have included recording this transaction then we're going to say that the cash is going to be increasing cash is a debit balance we're going to increase it in the debit direction then we're going to say that the revenue for other another type of revenue is going to be going up in the credit direction if we add up the basically income statement type accounts the temporary accounts we get down below with what would be similar to the net income number of the 1,973,700 next transaction information gotten from uh, subsequently to recording patient service revenues and that relates to the current year these are all going to be items that are basically going to be an adjustment to a kind of revenue type of account so let's see this as we go the one that we're probably most familiar with here is going to be the provision for bad debts so let's start with that one if we have the provision for bad debts is going to be an allowance method for the receivable so when we think about the accounts receivable up top we see this other account called the allowance for uncollectible accounts that's going to be the estimate of the accounts that we believe to be uncollectible so we're going to have to basically set up that uh, allowance for doubtful account with some type of estimate and the other side of that is going to be the provision for bad debts 
Now, if you think about that, note that we have patient service revenue. We've already recorded the revenue when we added the accounts receivable. And what we're saying now is that we're not going to collect on some of it. So really, you would think then that the patient service revenue is kind of overstated. It's an overstated revenue account. You would think that then it would need to go down. Instead of it decreasing, however, we're going to record another account, an expense account, basically, which is going to be provision for bad debt. Bad debt expense is typically what you might be familiar with in a for-profit organization, provision for bad debt here. So that's going to be the debit to the provision for bad debt. And then it's going to be a credit to the allowance account, increasing the allowance account here. So you can think of that basically as a separate kind of journal entry. We've got it all included in one journal entry here because these are all things that basically have an adjustment to uh, the revenue type of account for the time period. Then we have the uh, contractual adjustments. So contractual adjustments are going to be another type of adjustment to the patient service revenue. So in other words, we've recorded something within revenue. There's a contractual adjustment. Therefore, we and we also recorded it into accounts receivable at that time. Therefore, with the adjustment, we're typically going to say the adjustment is going to be decreasing with the contractual adjustment, the amount of the receivable that we will be receiving. So here, we're simply going to uh, reverse directly the transaction that happened, right? When we put it on the books, we credited the, re the revenue, increasing the revenue and debited the receivable. Now we're saying, hey, there's an adjustment so that we need to reduce the contract for the contractual adjustments, meaning we need to reduce the accounts receivable. So accounts receivable will be credited to make accounts receivable go down. This is part of that is included in this credit here. And then we're going to say the other side is, is going to go into a contractual adjustments. So the debit then is going to go to the contractual adjustment. So again, we're not going to be basically reducing the patient service revenue directly, but it in essence is an overstatement to revenue. We're not typically going to decrease the revenue. Therefore, we're going to put it into another type of an account called the contractual adjustments. So those are going to be those two. And then we have the charity care. So the charity care means that we're going to be giving services and not be collecting on them. So that's once again, it's an area where the patient service revenue was increased. We increased the revenue with a credit and we debited and increased the accounts receivable. So we have accounts receivable on the books, but now we've determined that we're going to have this amount that will be charity care, which means we're not going to get any money on it. So therefore, this one, we're actually going to reverse directly. So this one, again, you'd say all three of these note, the patient service revenue is in essence overstated if we've recorded something and we're not going to get paid for it. The other two, we created another expense account rather than reversing the revenue account. That's what the provision for bad debts was. That's what the contractual adjustment was. This one, however, we're going to reduce directly to the patient service revenue. So we're going to debit the patient service revenue. So this one is, is something that we don't often see in a for-profit type of organization to actually reverse the revenue account because like we did with the other two, we typically make some other account, a contra sales account or some kind of expense account instead of reversing the revenue account. This one, however, we're going to reverse the revenue account for it. The other side of that one is going to be going to the accounts receivable. Accounts receivable will then be decreasing. So then if we think about the credit side of this, of course, we're thinking that this 30, 32, 7 is going to be the other side of this provision for bad debts. And then the 645 and the 265, 25 adds up to the 9075, which is going to be the decrease in the accounts receivable. So let's record this out, see what it looks like. And if we record the contractual adjustments, we see down here, it's going to be increasing in the debit direction, which will bring down what would be kind of like the net income number. We're going to be increasing the provision for bad debts in the debit direction, which would bring down kind of like the net income number. And then we're going to be decreasing the revenue account for that uh, 262.5 which again would bring down what would be kind of like the net income number. On the other side of things, we got the accounts receivable and notes receivable credit. That's going to be decreasing the accounts receivable. So the accounts receivable account goes down. Next, the allowance for uncollectible accounts. The contra account has a credit balance. We're going to be increasing it in the credit direction. But as we do so, given the fact that it is a contra account, it will be decreasing the total assets as it would in the allowance method. If you have more questions about this particular one, 
the allowance method, the provision for bad debts, how to calculate that. Uh, we have a course that will go into that in a lot more depth uh, to get to that estimate. If you would like to go to that, it would be very similar for a for-profit and for a hospital. Next, we have the federal reimbursement grant of the $375,000, and then the expenses related to the grant paid during the year are going to be the $355,000. We're going to do two transactions here. We're going to think about what are we going to do about the payment first. We're going to think about the payment first, and then we'll think about the grant. Now, note th this type of ranch, it's a, it's a reimbursement grant. So what it's saying is, is they're only going to be paying up to $375,000. The government will pay up to $375,000 only if uh, the institution, the hospital, had made payments on, on these types of items so that they could then be reimbursed. So in other words, if the hospital does not make the payments, uh, the costs, they're not going to get reimbursed at the 375 because they didn't, it's a reimbursement. So that's going to be the point. So first, we're going to say that the hospital spent during the time period the 355 for expenses related to the grant paid during the year, which was research. So we're going to debit research expense for the 355 during the year, recording the expense for that time period and credit cash that was paid for it. Recording that out, then we would have the debit to the research uh, uh, expenses and then the credit to cash. So credit to cash would be our transaction. That would be decreasing the cash, increasing the expenses. That would decrease the uh, what would be similar to the net income number for all the blue items. Remember that this is a credit balance down below, not a loss. Next, we're going to think about what are we going to do about the reimbursement for Note that the reimbursement, again, will only be for the amount that was actually spent. So we're going to say that we're going to get cash then from the federal reimbursement, not for the 375 that they would have given if we had spent up to that amount, but only for the 355 which was actually spent. So then we're going to say that we got cash from uh, the grant of cash 355. Then we're going to be crediting the revenues for the grants and contributions of the 355. Recording this out then, we're going to say that the debit's going to go to cash. So we got cash up top. It's going to go up in the debit direction to the uh, 815, 800. We're going to credit the revenues, grants, and contributions. Here's grants uh, revenue account. It's going to be increasing in the credit direction. It's going to be a type of revenue, of course, which would be increased in the bottom line. We don't have the net income number now, but it would be increased in the bottom line because the revenue account is increasing. Next transaction, we've got the vouchers issued for. So now these are going to be the vouchers that we're going to be issued, issuing throughout the time period, kind of like the accounts payable. Once again, we're going to be grouping all these transactions as if they were going to be done in one uh, transaction. So we're going to record all these in one transaction. So obviously, they would be done at, at various points throughout the time period, whether it be a year or a month. So we have the fiscal and administrative service expenses. We have the general service expenses, nursing service expenses, other professional service expenses, inventory that was purchased, and expenses accrued at year end of the 8700 So we're going to record these all in one journal entry. These are going to be all things that we're, we're saying are going to be purchased in essence on account. So these are going to be transactions on account. So we're just going to find the related expense account and record these items. These would be very similar to a for-profit type of organization. The thing that would differ would, of course, be the names of the accounts for the types of things that are being spent on. So we have the fiscal and administrative expenses. We're going to be debiting for the uh, 201 840. We have the general service expenses. We will be debiting for the 254 200. We have the nursing service expenses. We will be debiting for the 600,000. We have the other professional service expenses. We will be debiting for the 187.5 and the inventory, an asset account that we purchased is going to be a debit for the 108 300. And then we're going to be saying that the accrued expenses payable uh, needs to be 8,700. So if we think about that, we're going to say that, all right, accrued expenses payable here is a liability account. It's at 12,000 and minus it needs to be 8,700. So we're going to be debiting it to decrease it by the 3,300. And then the total then, the difference then is going to be going to the vouchers payable, which is kind of like the accounts payable account. So uh, account, and we're going to be crediting the vouchers payable. So recording this transaction, then we're going to say 
that we have the fiscal and administrative expense down below. It goes up in the debit direction that would be bringing down what would be basically the net income type number. Note we had revenue before or net income before this journal entry, all these expenses are going to be bringing it down. This is actually a loss because the debits are winning through all the blue accounts here. All the blue accounts debits are beating the credits, therefore loss. Next, we have the 254 200. That's going to be uh, here increasing in the debit direction, decreasing what would be similar to net income. We have the nursing, which is going to be increasing here, decreasing what would be similar to net income. We have the other professional services, which is going to be increasing in the debit direction, decreasing what we would think of as basically net income. Then we have the inventory. Inventory is going to be an asset. So we, we purchased it on account in a similar fashion, but it's going to be an asset account up top, increasing the asset account to, to this amount, not affecting the uh, income statement or the net income number and the adjustment to the accrued expenses payable, which we can see at the 12,000 starting, we decreased it by 3,300 to get to the 8,700, which was the amount we determined it to be. And the difference between all this is going to be going to the vouchers payable. All this is increasing the vouchers payable. The vouchers payable is a credit balance. We're going to be crediting it, increasing it in the credit direction.